Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it is time for part three of the Monday Q&A. So let's get it done. Does muscle gain slow down as you get fat on a diet? Is muscle gain the most optimal at low body fat percentages? Okay, this is a very complex one that people debate about, argue about, top experts argue about, and it isn't a conclusive amount of evidence. Although the general trend tends to be that it's easier to gain a fair amount of fat to muscle if you're in the healthy body fat range, which means for men something like 10 to 20 percent and women somewhere between 20 and 30 percent. Now when you start going much over that, you start getting into unhealthy levels of body fat. Yeah, your nutrient partitioning can be a little different depending on how active you are, but if you're highly active, it still may not be that big of an issue. So you might gain a little more fat than muscle on a bulk, but this is subject to debate. And you run into the same issue when you get very lean is that your body is going to want to put on body fat easier. So it is slightly harder to make optimal lean gains when you start getting under about 10% for men and under about 20% for women. But all of that is assuming that you're not on any anabolic drugs also, which completely changes everything. And I can't answer that specifically because there's 37 different drugs that affect it 37 different ways. Some affect nutrient partitioning more than others and differently than others. All right, next question. Your thoughts on ibuprofen and DOMS. Heard many elite athletes use it for faster recovery. No, ibuprofen is not going to speed up recovery. What it's going to do is reduce inflammation. Now, there has been a lot of debate as to if that reducing the inflammation slows down muscle growth. And it's been studied quite a bit because there were some studies that suggested that it might, but the overall meta-analysis last time I checked, and this is I haven't checked in over a year, so I might not be current, but the current meta-analysis that I'm aware of says that it doesn't seem to negatively affect muscle growth despite some concerns that it might. But here's your big concern. If you're getting a lot of inflammation and you're using ibuprofen to bring the inflammation down, you may be putting yourself at a higher chance of injury. You need to figure out why you're getting that inflammation rather than keep hammering the problem and reducing that inflammation with a drug because reducing it also increases your potential chance for injury. So figure out what's wrong with your training or your program. And remember, a lot of the elite athletes do that because they're pushing themselves beyond their limit in season. It's not necessarily during the off season. All right, next question. How significant are the effects of high fructose corn syrup on body composition? Biochemistry professor states that our bodies cannot process it efficiently and thus it goes straight to fat storage. All right, that latter is bullshit. Now, I'm not saying there aren't problems with eating large amounts of high fructose corn syrup, but this whole efficiently thing, anything that your body uses efficiently as far as a macronutrient or a calorie type, it's actually going to be more fattening for pretty obvious reasons. When you use stuff inefficiently like protein, it's much harder to store it as body fat because you end up burning off a lot of calories trying to process it and do other things with it. I don't think the latter was said by a biochemistry professor, but I could be wrong. As far as we can tell, the only major issues with high fructose corn syrup is that you're getting generally a lower fiber food. You're just getting empty calories from it. And for a lot of people that can be a problem. And for sedentary people, very large amounts of fructose can cause metabolic issues. But for athletic individuals, it hasn't been studied closely enough yet to give a definitive answer. But certainly the evidence in the real world when we study athletes who eat a lot of sugar or large amounts of fructose, they don't seem to suffer the same metabolic issues that sedentary people do from it. So it's also an issue of how athletic you are as far as it actually being an issue calorie for calorie with body fat gains. So the take home here is don't be a lazy fat ass who sits on the couch all day. Be athletic and these things become less of a concern for you. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. And I will talk to you guys next time in part four.